Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and this right here is Albert Mickelson. This was the first American to win a Nobel Prize in science approximately 100 years ago and it's also the person that officially stated that there was nothing else to discover in physics. We understood the world perfectly and there were just some minor things we didn't really get yet. Well, fast forward 100 years and it's mystery after mystery after mystery. And today we're going to talk about another such unusual mystery that um, has now been maybe clarified just a little bit, but we're going to talk about something we don't really understand, dark energy. Let's talk about this and welcome to Odeme. Now, it only took a few decades after Mickelson's statement for these scientists to realize, well, first of all, that universe was not really how we thought it was to begin with. First of all, back then, people didn't even know galaxies existed. They literally believed that we just lived in one galaxy and everything we saw was part of that galaxy. It wasn't until 1930s that we realized that those little nebula that we're looking at, they're not nebula. They're actually galaxies far, far, far away from us. And our understanding of the size of the universe since has increased by a huge margin. Now, today we know that the universe also expands. This was something that um, Edwin Hubble was able to show relatively easily. And we also know that the universe doesn't just expand, it seems to be accelerating its expansion. And this acceleration is really difficult to explain. And for this reason, the scientists proposed the idea of dark energy. Today we think about 73% of everything in the universe is dark energy with only about 4.6% being composed of things that are common to us, basically atoms. These scientists normally refer to this as baryonic matter. And uh, for the most part, we also think that dark energy amount has changed over time, with some scientists believing that there was maybe no dark matter in the beginning of the universe after the Big Bang. It somehow appeared or it's something that may have resulted from the interaction with the empty space. In other words, when it comes to mysteries, dark energy is it. It's as mysterious and as not understood as it can get. And so this is why when it comes to um, scientific studies, it's very exciting to see new attempts to try to understand this unusual phenomenon. So this paper right here does just that. They're trying to investigate dark energy, but not by looking at what it is, but instead by looking at what it's probably not. And they do a really good job at establishing what dark energy is not. And by the way, the idea of dark energy and also the idea of dark matter, despite both having dark in them, have nothing to do with each other. They, in a sense, have an almost opposite effect. And really, the only reason we're calling them dark is because we just don't know things about them. While dark matter, we believe, is this unusual force that's responsible for keeping things together and for keeping galaxies from falling apart, somehow, the dark energy is this unusual force that seems to be forcing things apart, especially on really large-scale distances. So, um, back in the 90s, the scientists discovered that, for some unknown reason, the universe was accelerating its expansion the farther away you went. So if we were to look at the universe as it is, let's just say about 12 billion light years away from us, it would be accelerating a lot faster than we initially thought. And these scientists actually won the Nobel Prize back in 2011 for this discovery. But the idea here is that this suggested to us that something was forcing the galaxy apart from each other. And relatively recently, we even came to the conclusion that it's quite possible that the end of the universe is going to be because the universe literally rips itself apart because of the excess of dark energy in it. This is something we're still investigating, but it's sort of hard to imagine. Basically, imagine things being so far apart from each other that the universe just rips. I've made a video about this and you can actually check it out somewhere above my head, but the idea of a big rip is a little bit hard to imagine. So anyway, what exactly did the scientists do in this particular paper? And to begin explaining this, let's remind ourselves that we believe that there are four major forces in the universe. We have the strong nuclear force, we have the electromagnetic force, weak nuclear force, and the gravitational force. Two of these, gravitation and electromagnetism, are quite familiar to us because we experience them in daily lights. The other two are more nuclear and are really, really, really small in scale, so it's something we can't really imagine but you might remember hearing about them from high school. But some scientists today believe that there is another force, the fifth force. 
the dark energy force, something that happens when there is nothing around, basically something that happens away from mass, away from galaxies, away from everything, in the middle of empty space of the universe. And so, is this fifth force responsible for expanding the universe? Is this something that we need to investigate and try to understand? Well, this is exactly what the scientists in this paper decided to do. They wanted to see if it's possible for this fifth force to exist. But just a side note, the name fifth force has also been applied to dark matter. So technically we have this fifth force and sixth force that we're investigating, we just haven't found any evidence for this yet, and so this is why we still are stuck with four forces. And the reasoning behind this paper is actually relatively simple. So if it's a force, it's a repelling force that's um, causing things to uh, fly apart from each other. And so it's very likely that this fifth force would be weakest around objects with less gravity. So here, in the emptiness of space away from this galaxy, the fifth force would be the strongest. Whereas the closer to the central mass we get, the weaker this force gets. With the weakest effects being detected around really massive objects such as, for example, black holes. And so to investigate all of this, all the scientists did was create a vacuum chamber and then put two objects in there. One of them would have more mass than the other. And the object with the least mass was a simple atom of rubidium. While the larger object was some sort of a marble that they were able to move around that was also designed so that it wouldn't really create any disturbances. The overall experiment sort of looked like this, and you can find out more about this in the paper in the description below, but they used several very well-known physical principles to try to see if the larger, more massive object would have less potential dark energy than a much smaller object which would be the little atom of rubidium 87. And they tried to simulate all of this by taking the marble, moving it around, and seeing if the effects of, well, very tiny effects of dark energy would either increase or decrease the potential repulsion effect of dark energy coming from the atom, and could then be somehow detected. Now, they've used a very well-known technique known as atom interferometry for this, where we essentially use the property of atoms to be able to act like waves or particles. And so by studying the acceleration of atoms caused by the potential dark energy and by seeing the observed versus predicted results, they were able to establish that, well, there seems to be no effect whatsoever. In other words, the less massive body in this case was not really producing any dark energy and was not causing any more additional repulsion. So basically, no dark energy. It's not a fifth force. Or at least it's not a force that's being formed around the objects with the less gravitational attraction. Because if there was a fifth force in action here, the atoms as they were moving close to the marble would actually veer off the path and produce the observation that would suggest something repulsed them, something moved them away. And this also in a sense disproves several ideas including the so-called uh, symmetron and chameleon theories that depend on the fifth force being dark energy. And these theories are sort of beyond the scope of this video, but the idea is that they believe that the universe is the way it is because of this unusual force. Now, I'm sure there will be follow-up studies and most likely other discussions on whether this experiment was actually well designed or not, but so far it seems that whatever dark energy is, it's not this innate force in, of nature, it's not something that's formed in the middle of empty space, it's something else. Maybe a particle, maybe our misunderstanding of how a universe acts and how it's shaped, or maybe something completely different. But going back to the original beginning of this video, despite being the first science Nobel Prize winner in the US, Albert Mickelson was way off in his assumption that we knew everything about the universe. It's actually pretty safe to say that we know so little about the universe today compared to what we knew 100 years ago that there are a lot more mysteries out there than there are actual pieces of knowledge we understand for certain. So yes, we do understand simple physics and we know how basic interaction of planets and stars works, but everything beyond our galaxy and also even in our own galaxy is still a huge mystery to us. But this is why this channel is for. We're going to be talking about these mysteries, discussing them and trying to figure them out. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing and share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before, and also maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.